The idea started out as a way to spice up the average strength user build. Everyone knows that double big hammer giant weapon jumping attack go burr, right? We've seen that so many times, but hey, if that's what you enjoy as a player, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just that Elden Ring as a game has unlimited potential, yet I always see the exact same builds on YouTube because that's what's popular. But remember, this is still a Souls game, and there is no such thing as a bad build, only building inefficiently. Luckily for you all, I don't touch grass, so I make shit like this for fun, and oh my god, yes! This is probably my biggest spreadsheet yet that I've spent the last last week on testing, which is why I'm not even going to bother showing it all until towards the end of the video because I can already hear you saying, numbers are cringe. So fear not because I'm Syrobe and I'm just a guy who makes videos for fun. And as always, I do all the nerd shit so you guys don't have to. So please leave a fat fucking like and a massive sub because most people that watch my videos are not currently subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get right into this build. You've all seen these builds. They're typically sluggish and take a fuck ton of stamina for a single attack and usually leave you fat rolling or damn near close because of how heavy they are. But previously, most people were utilizing punching not because it was super strong or viable, but because the concept of punching is fucking hilarious within the context of the Elden Ring universe. It started out as me trying to create a way to make this build pack a punch. This guy stinks! I wanted the fist to be viable, and I knew damn well Miyazaki left the tools to do so. In all honesty, it's the most fun I've had with any build so far, and it can deal almost 4,000 damage in a single punch. But you all saw that big ass spreadsheet at the start, which became the result of me thinking how far could I go? What was the limit of punching in Elden Ring, and how could I find a way to surpass it? It didn't stop there. I grew more and more hungry to break the limits of the game. This led me to the question of how much damage could I potentially deal within a single one-handed punch. Immediately got to work to craft a punch worthy of being held next to Saitama's as the most powerful singular punch a person could possibly deal in Elden Ring. And yes, I mean one punch. The heart of this build still exists as a viable option to make fist-type weapons feel stronger, but I wasn't satisfied enough with just that. And real quick, check out my cosplay items because I think I did a pretty fucking sick job and nailed the Saitama look. Anyways, the Kestis, Kest, Kestis, Kestis, the fucking glove weapon. It felt underwhelming and didn't have a strong punch to it, which felt more like a martial arts style of fighting. But no, I didn't want martial arts. I didn't want anything refined in style. I wanted a singular, lethargic, heavy hitting punch and nothing else. From my testings, the two best fist type weapons are the Iron Ball and the Star Fist. The Star Fist seems to outshine the Iron Ball pretty much always, and it's always a bit more damage and has the ability to proc bleed, resulting in more consistent damage, but this is not a bleed build, so we don't care about all that. It barely ends up resulting in 100 more base damage anyways, which is hardly much of a difference for a single punch, so I'll show it at the very end just for comparison. The only other best option for this was the Iron Ball Fist weapon, which can apply the Ash of War Royal Knight's Resolve to it. This allows it to gain the heavy affinity while having an A tier strength scaling and at a plus 25 level, these are its damage stats. Then I thought to myself, a Saitama build would obviously have to include 99 strength, I mean he's the strongest there is, so it just makes sense to have that, and without being over leveled, I said fuck the soft caps for this one video only, and dumped 89 total points into that shit instantly. As you can see, I'm specced into literally just strength and nothing else. However, I only have 89 points of strength because of a very crucial part to make this build work. As you can see, I'm level 125 with as much strength as possible without sacrificing any important stats like endurance or HP. The first most important thing that you'll need for this build is the wondrous physics flask that everyone has, but most people tend to overlook, specifically the strength not tier, which provides a plus 10 skill points bonus of strength to our character as soon as you sip it for 180 seconds or 3 minutes, which is a fairly long time and most likely longer than any average fight you'll come across. This nicely caps us out at 99 strength and allows our punch to do the minimum of 834 damage that you just saw earlier. But trust me, this is only the beginning. The biggest key features to this build besides the strength not crystal tier are the talisman and consumables. For the talisman, there aren't a whole lot that could possibly help with this build besides a few because trust me, I've tested every one of them and I'll be going over the ones that I think are the best 
and the ones that don't work right now. The two most important ones being the Ritual Sword Talisman that also applies a 10% damage buff as long as you're at full HP. The second one being the Axe Talisman, which provides a 10% damage buff on any charge melee attack. The Ritual Sword Talisman also stacks at the Axe Talisman charge attacks as they multiply one another. Speaking of charge attacks, remember we still have an empty slot in our Physics Flask. For the second and final slot, you're going to want to put in the Spiked Crack tier, which gives us another 15% damage buff to our character's charge attacks for a duration of 180 seconds, or again, 3 minutes. It's the exact same duration as the Strength tier, so these work really well together as they both run out at the same time. So just by stacking all of this together, your punches should look a little something like this. Then with the little spice, we add the Royal Knight's Resolve as a cherry on top, and we get 2,083 damage in a single punch, which is insane, but I'm still not satisfied with this. For those that are unaware, you might have missed this completely in your playthrough, but perfumes are sleeper OP, man. I've messed around with this for a little bit and found that the Blood Boil Aromatic is a perfume that when consumed, lasts 60 seconds and provides a 30% damage increase, which is a lot. It's important to note that this is not only stronger than other consumables such as Exalted Flesh, but also does not stack with it, as they will override each other when used, which means you cannot use both at once. Blood Boil also does not stack with spells like Flame Grant Me Strength and overrides that as well. However, it provides a 30% buff while Flame Grant Me Strength is only 20% and Blood Boil lasts 30 seconds longer than Flame Grant Me Strength. Blood Boil also costs 21 mana to use while Flame Grant Me Strength is 28, so it's a clear winner over these other options, as the only other drawback is that you lose about 20% of all your defensive stats. And if you're wondering how this works in PvP, it works pretty fucking well without much setup, as you can just pop the Physics Flask the moment you load in, then once you have the enemy in your field of view, pop the Blood Boil, and exchange a blow with Royal Knight's Resolve, and you're good to go. Again. I am still not satisfied, and I know that you're not either. The numbers of all the things combined that I've shown you so far add up to 2,708 damage for a single burst, which is impressive. It's a 224.7% increase from our initial base attack, but I wanted to go even further than that. It's important to note that the rest of the video is purely just for fun and isn't exactly practical in use, but will give us the results that we want. To make it clear, we aren't using any spells because that would require additional points in faith for small improvements for damage, but luckily for you, there are two ways that we can further increase our damage output. The other two ways are the weapon skills of the Commander Standard and the Jellyfish Shield. Those two weapons both have weapon arts that when activated give you a 20% damage bonus for 30 seconds each. It's also important to know that these do not stack with Golden Vow or Flame Grant Me Strength anyways, and are just as good if not better. As we recall, Flame Grant Me Strength can't be used with Blood Boil anyway, so we're going to focus on Commander Standard which offers a 20% damage bonus buff and a 10% buff to all defensive stats for 30 seconds. The only advantage that Golden Vow has over this is that it lasts longer, but honestly doesn't matter as long as your enemies die in a single punch, am I right? The way that you're going to increase your damage even further is a bit tricky, so please pay close attention. After you pop both the Physics Flask and Blood Boil, you'll need to use the Commander Standard skill, and then right after you use that weapon skill, swap to your Fist weapon in the same hand and activate Royal Knight's Resolve. As soon as Royal Knight's Resolve is active, you'll want to quickly swap your left hand weapon where you have the Jellyfish Shield equipped and activate that skill which stacks with everything else and does almost 4000 damage in a single punch. The way you apply these buffs must exactly match the order in which I applied mine, because if you then two-hand your main weapon or put the shield away, the buff from the Jellyfish Shield is removed and you'll have to reactivate it again. Side note, if you're above the level 150 mark and you want to make this build work, make sure that you actually max out both strength and dex and set your fist weapons to the quality affinity, as you will get a higher damage scaling with more investment in both of those, but you won't get more damage until you're past around 70 points in each, so for lower levels, just stick to strength. Thank you all so much for 40,000 subscribers. I appreciate it a ton and love being able to make videos like this for you all, so I hope it does well. And if you want to discuss builds with me or other people, then hop in my community Discord for Elden Ring, where you can suggest me dope shit to try out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.